Where are you investing? Well, uh, we have a lot of investments in uh, royalty companies um, because uh, we find that they're the easiest place to uh, take advantage of the technology. The royalty owner gets the benefit of the, you know, fracking, the, 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 the drilling technology, the enhanced recovery, and doesn't really pay any of the expenses. He kind of takes it off the top line. At the end of the day, right, they wind up giving money to oil companies in exchange for either production stream right, or uh, right. money. Well, they actually just give, it, give their rights, the leases mm -hmm. to the minerals that they own. Uh, but I've been in the E&P business for a very long time, since the early 70s. Uh, and we do have, you know, direct investments also in, in operating assets. So we're currently drilling in the, in the Permian, in northeast, or northeast Louisiana, in uh, East Texas, and I think in Eddy County in New Mexico. Uh, but the business has turned into more of a mining business than it was an exploration business because the technologies today are so sophisticated, it's really not about is it there. It's mostly about how much of what's there can I recover and what is it going to cost to do that. I love that you say that because if you look at big oil really as a manufacturer right. or big industrial shale is a manufacturer. They do the same process over and over. They get more efficient and they move on. Right. And that's a huge change in the industry. Right. And one of the reasons why prices are some of these companies are still quite profitable is because the areas they're working in are uh, susceptible to improvement in production with the technology application. So where have you in increased your drilling, say, over the last three months as oil has recovered? Well, we're, we're involved in a, a field up in North Louisiana called the Terry, Terryville field. It's a large natural gas field, one of the most prolific fields in the United States. And, you know, we've just committed, I think, probably about $100 million to drilling program up there. Is the Permian in a bubble? Uh, no, the Permian is not in a bubble because uh, the, the, the land value is basically derivative of what the other aspects of the mining process are. So if they can make, uh, if they can make money at $50, which they can, nice money, then it's not in a bubble. But you got Exxon coming in, investing billions, Marathon, $60,000 land acres. I mean. Yeah, but that's all because they know what's going to come back. They're making an IRR calculation. But what's the difference between that and, say, the Bakken calculations that we saw a few years ago? Uh, there's no difference. And now people are going actually back to the Bakken because they got better at the Bakken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They got more efficient in drilling up there, too. So, you know, I think this is, again, it's a, it's a manufacturing business. And if you're a, lo you're a low cost producer, even if prices are, are down, you're going to still make money. So we're trading right now at 48.67, but we're below 50 for WTI. What's the level where you call up your guys and say, "All right, stop"? Uh, well, I mean, if, if for example, uh, for it, it, for natural gas, if it gets much below three dollars, it starts getting pretty dicey. Although I understand in the Marcellus, they can make money at two dollars. So at 295 for yeah, that yeah, gas. Yeah, right, right. What's the level you lose at 275 that you're looking at? Right. And what about for oil? Uh, we're more gas heavy than oil heavy, but again, at $50, every project that we're doing is a profitable project.